In this video, we'll see a more general algorithm for performing inference in general conditional random fields, known as belief propagation. So we've seen in the previous video uh, that we could uh, visually illustrate a uh, undirected graphical model like a conditional random field that can be written as a product of factors into a factor graph where we have a graph with nodes that correspond to random variables and other nodes that correspond to the different factors in the uh, model. One advantage of the factor graph is that it provides a good representation for uh, actually deriving and illustrating the types of computations that uh, we must do to perform inference in a uh, undirected graphical model like a conditional random field. Uh, in fact, the forward-backward algorithm that we've seen before for uh, computing the alpha and beta tables, which are useful for and necessary to compute the marginals in a linear chain conditional random field, can be written in a more general form where uh, in uh, its uh, specific case it boils down to the forward-backward algorithm but for a general uh, conditional random field it provides now an algorithm for these more general cases for performing inference. Specifically, belief pro so this algorithm is known as belief propagation. It's a message passing algorithm in the sense that now in the graph, each node, uh, the nodes are going to exchange messages uh, between them. And uh, the messages are going to be exchanged normally until convergence. That is, until the messages that one node is sending to another node does not change. And uh, the idea is that the messages that one node is going to send to another node is going to be a combination of uh, things that come from the factors associated with that node and uh, messages that were received from its neighbors. So there are actually going to be two types of messages, much like there are two types of nodes in the factor graph, there are going to be two types of messages. Um, so there are going to be messages from a variable node, which uh, are illustrated as a circle in the graph. Uh, to its neighbor factor nodes, which are the squares. Uh, the messages, they're going to be defined in a recursive form. So the message from a variable node, uh, which is uh, illustrated uh, is noted S, to a uh, node that is a factor. So we use F to illustrate factor nodes. So the message from S to F, when the node S takes value I, is just going to be the product of the messages that all the other factors f prime which are connected to s and that are not f so uh, the node f will not send messages recursively to itself so it's it's going to receive the messages that other factors f prime have sent to s uh, for again the uh, uh, where we assume that the node s is taking value i so we take all the messages that have been sent to S and we multiply them together and that becomes the message that S is going to send to F and when we take the product of fa uh, messages we only take the messages from factors F primes which are not F but our uh, neighbors are connected to S okay so in this illustration here the message from S to F is going to be the product of the messages that come from this and this node this factor node here and this factor node here. So they would, this would be one of the F primes and this would be another F prime. And now the messages from a factor node to a neighbor variable node is going to be slightly more complicated. Um, so the message from F to S, where uh, S takes is assumed to take value I. So for instance, in uh, if S is a label node, then I would be a potential label for that, uh, for that label node is going to be now not just a product but a sum. So we're going to have a sum over the value of all the other variables that uh, are involved in the factor f, the factor that's sending a message. Uh, but where in the sum we'll keep the uh, value of the node s to which we're sending a message to its value we're assuming which is i, which is this here. So we take the value of the factor for all vectors z 
where uh, all the values of all the other uh, variables uh, involved in this factor are being changed to their potential value. We iterate over all these values, except for the node s, which we keep fixed to i. And when you take that value, you also multiply the uh, messages that all the other neighbor nodes, and so the neighbor nodes here are going to be variable nodes, s primes, that are neighbors of f, except the node to which we're sending a message, s. So we're going to multiply all, all the messages that these uh, nodes s primes have sent to f, and uh, we're uh, also taking into account in this sum, what is the value that that uh, uh, node s prime is taking in the uh, variables involved in the factor? So visually, uh, the message sent from this factor to that variable node is going to involve the messages that came from all other variable nodes that are not s, and uh, it's going to be the product of these messages. But then um, they're going to, uh, they're, we're going to get a message for each potential value that each of these variable nodes can take. And they're going to be combined together and weighted by the uh, factor associated, the sort of factor that is sending the message. And then we're going to sum over all potential values that these, this variable node and this variable node could take. So to make this more concrete, we're going to do the uh, specify, uh, specific case of a linear chain CRF, and it's going to be simplified so we won't have a context window. Uh, we'll just have y1 be connected to x1 and y2 only to x2. So here we have our equations for the messages. And now uh, we'll uh, do a few iterations of the messages uh, where we compute a, a few of them in, uh, actually we'll, we'll, uh, in this example, we'll only do from left to right for now. So uh, first, we uh, uh, initially uh, we initialize all the messages to one. So the mu messages are all going to be set to one initially. That's usually the starting condition we use. Now let's consider the message that is sent from x1 to this factor. So a message from a uh, variable node to a factor uh, node should be the product of all the messages that the uh, variable node has received from other factors except f. Now in this case, x uh, here is only involved in one factor, so there are no other messages. So in this case, we'll, the product of nothing uh, will set it to one by definition. Next, we'll consider this message here from this, this factor to that variable node. So if we look at the uh, formula here, from a factor to a variable node, uh, what we have to do is that we have to sum, so, okay, so this factor uh, involves y1 and x1, and then well, what we have to do is to sum over all values involved in the factor, that is x1 and y1, except that we keep the value of the node to which we're sending the message, so that's s, to its specified value in the message, so that's i here. And also, we only sum over the variables z that are unobserved. Uh, so in this case, x1 is given. So we keep it fixed also to its uh, given value. So in fact, in this case, we uh, have only one term in the sum. And that's the term where uh, x1 takes the specified value. And y1 takes uh, also its, uh, the value i. So removing the ink, uh, the message being sent to y1 from this factor is going to be the value of the factor for x1 and uh, some given value, value of y1 being equal to i. So that's this term, times the message that was received by this factor from other value uh, variable nodes than y1. So the only other message is this message here, which is one, so one times that, because this will be the expression of uh, the message. I notice that when I say that I say for a given value i for the variable node, it means that I need to send what this message is for all values i of the variable node in question. Uh, so in this case, when I'm sending a message to uh, y1, 
um, it can take as many values as the number of classes from 1 to C. So I would need to compute this expression for I being 1, 2, 3, up to capital C. And so when I'm sending uh, this, uh, uh, I'm can, I can think of it as sending a vector, actually, where each element of the vector is a uh, different value of the message for different values of, of i. And so I could just take the exponential of the uh, log unary factor for all value, possible values for i1 and send that as the message of uh, this factor to the variable node y1. Then we have to send message from y1 to this factor. So we have a message from a uh, variable node to a factor node. Assuming that our variable takes uh, some given value i. And that needs to be the product of all messages that were sent to uh, the factor, um, to the factor, sorry, to the variable node f, except uh, s, sorry, except f. So in this case, uh, the uh, other message that could have come in from other factors would be this message. So we'll have the product of just this. It's the only other factor message that this is receiving except from a message from this guy, uh, this factor node. So the message sent by uh, I, uh, y1 to this factor would just be the exponential of the unary factor for the value of y1, which would be i. So we'd have the vector of exponential of AU1, exponential of AU2, and so on. This vector would be sent to that fac factor. Next, we have the message from this factor node to that variable node. So that's this rule here. Now we have to sum over all uh, the uh, values of the random variables involved in the factor f. So it's this factor. So the variables are y1 and y2. But we have to keep zs to its value i. So uh, in other words, we have to send the messages for each value of i where we do the sum and we take the uh, variable to which we're sending a message and we're keeping it to that specified value i. And otherwise, for the other variables, we sum over their values. So in this case, we're sending to y2, so we're going to sum over the value of y1. So we have the sum over y1 of this factor, so the factor here, which is the pairwise factor. So it's the exponential of the pairwise factor here, times all the messages that come from other variable nodes S prime that are not S and that were sent to F. So essentially, this message here, so that message here. So I have the exponential of AUY1 times the exponential of APY1Y2. So that's equivalent to the exponential of AUY1 and APY1Y2. And then we're summing over the other variables that are not Y2. So that's, in this case, Y1. And uh, so that's this message that's being sent from that factor to this variable node. Let's move some ink. Oh, and notice that this is actually the initial value of the first column in the uh, uh, computation of the alpha table in the forward-backward algorithm. So we see we're starting to recover pieces from the forward-backward algorithm. Next, we could send the message from here to there. So with a similar reasoning as in this case here, we get 1. And with a similar reasoning, the message from this factor to this variable node would just be the exponential of the unary factor uh, for the uh, position 2 in the uh, sequence. Now the message sends from y2 to this factor, this pairwise factor. Uh, so we are in this rule here, s to f, would be the product of all the messages from other factors f primes that are not f and that are connected to s. So it's the product of that message and that message, which is this expression here, or equivalently alpha 1 y2, if we use our notation from the forward-backward algorithm, which we find here. It's the product of this times that. And now if we compute the message to y3, then uh, again what we get is the uh, sum over the other variable that shares the same factor, so that's y2, of the pairwise factor 
here times all the messages that were sent to uh, all the messages that were sent to f from a variable known as prime which is connected to f and which is not s so in this case it would be uh, it would be that message here so we see that we have a sum over y2 the other uh, variable node of the exponential of a uh, 2y2 which is here times alpha 1 y2 which is here and times the exponential of uh, the pairwise factor which we can just put into the same exponential here and so this corresponds to the pairwise factor in, in this expression here it corresponds to this factor so if you continue like this in uh, this sequence in this order of the messages we actually recover all of the uh, of equations for the values of the alpha so the column in the alpha tables and so uh, so this is just you know at the beginning of a demonstration that there are equivalent and you know full demonstration will actually show you that uh, uh, and so would validate that uh, belief propagation uh, applied from left to right and then right to left actually yields the computation of all the alpha table and then the computation of the beta table. So, yeah, so actually if you look at this, we actually do uh, recover the expression for the second column of the alpha table. And so by con proceeding like this, we recover all the uh, alpha table columns. So yeah, uh, for the to sum up for uh, the linear chain, uh, a linear chain graph, belief propagation is actually the same as the forward backward algorithm. The forward pass computes the alpha table, the backward pass the beta table. Uh, for the similar reason, for numerical stability, we actually uh, usually implement a version that passes log messages, so that's going to be more stable numerically. And one advantage of the message passing algorithm is that, uh, the belief propagation algorithm, is that we can do inference now on other types of structure. Now, interestingly, belief propagation yields exact inference if our, uh, the structure of our factor graph is a tree, an arbitrary tree, actually. So uh, if we, uh, uh, so we can uh, show that belief propagation actually eventually converges by computing the uh, uh, if we compute the, uh, each of the messages, eventually the messages stop uh, changing and, uh, and they actually correspond to what you would like the messages to be. So if you're in log space, uh, the log sum of the uh, factors for all of the uh, variables uh, that uh, come from uh, a given part of the tree. And so these log messages are gonna, uh, can be used then to provide, uh, do approximate inference and in particular compute marginals. The uh, general algorithm with the same equations can also be applied to a graph which has loops. Uh, so in this case, it would not correspond to a tree. And, uh, and then it's often used in practice to do approximate inference. So uh, uh, obtain some approximate estimates of what the marginals could be. Uh, you have to be careful, however, the algorithm could diverge, uh, so uh, there are certain tricks that uh, are used to make it converge. Uh, so, I ref you know, there's, there's a vast body of literature on uh, message passing algorithms and loopy belief propagation, which I won't cover. Um, but so one trick that is sometime, sometimes used is that instead of uh, updating the messages by overriding them, you instead when you recompute a message, uh, the second pass where you're computing the, the same message a second time, you actually do some sort of weighted average between the current message and the previous message. So that's one trick that's used for uh, having a better behaved uh, uh, algorithm. So I'm not going into the detail in part because there are actually a lot of general purpose libraries that are publicly available where we just pass the graph in a certain data structure and then the algorithm will do this uh, uh, message passing to belief propagation will run it over your graph. Uh, and, uh, and these libraries are quite useful because then they can be used on arbitrary types of graphs. So it means that now, instead of constraining ourselves to a linear chain CRF, if we're doing uh, sequential classification, 
we could start considering adding uh, lateral connections between labels that are at two positions away from each other. So I have factors between yk and yk plus 2. Uh, so even if this would introduce some loops in the, uh, in the model, we could still deal with those. Uh, we could add also lateral connections uh, for triplets of labels as well. Um, so really we can just explore a bunch of different types of graphs by uh, uh, adding factors as we wish. And then from these factors we get a factor graph and from the factor graph this would uh, describe the way of passing messages between uh, variable nodes and, fa log fa and factors and from factors to variable nodes. So the idea really is when we do CRF modeling is that you want to add connections between the things that have uh, dependencies that are fairly strong that you want to model directly. And uh, in fact, you can have a uh, connectivity that varies between examples. Uh, so if you have some information uh, that differs between examples, which will tell you that for one example, for instance, the first label should really be connected to the last label, for instance, but for other uh, maybe for other uh, structures you don't want this, you could actually have a separate essentially graph, separate factor graph for each training example when you're actually, uh, uh, and you could actually train such a, a CRF as well. So examples of uh, graphs that uh, we often see for a computer vision, we could have a grid structure. So imagine we were labeling each pixel in an image by uh, uh, maybe a segmentation uh, label, which tells us uh, which maybe separates uh, foreground from uh, background. Well, then we, if we wanted to, uh, the labeling to be fairly smooth, we could have factors between each pair of uh, uh, pixels like this uh, that are adjacent in the grid of pixels so that the uh, labeling is uh, somewhat smooth uh, uh, spatially. But really, in general, we could have any set of variables connected with uh, a bunch of different... Uh, factors, in this case, I'm only showing pair, uh, uh, factors that are over pairs of variables, they, but they could be over triplets or, or more. And then the uh, loopy belief propagation algorithm could be applied also on these uh, types of graphs. Um, you have to be careful. It doesn't, uh, like I said, loopy belief propagation or belief propagation on loopy graphs is not necessarily guaranteed to converge unless you're careful. That's not something I'm going to cover, but I encourage you to look at the literature if you have you encounter problems where you actually want these more complicated structure uh, to uh, uh, model your problem. And uh, finally, uh, I just want to show the expression for what to do with these messages. So intuitively, these messages correspond to uh, what is the sum of all the variable nodes uh, that's uh, uh, that uh, are not the current variable node that come from a certain uh, uh, direction from the graph. And so if we wanted to compute the marginal probability of a label somewhere in the graph, well, uh, to get its approximated marginal, that approximated marginal, we just take, uh, similarly as we've done before, the exponential of the log factor that involves only that uh, variable, and then plus the messages that come from all the factors that involve uh, the uh, node yk, uh, except the uh, factor that uh, the the factor that only involves yk, if you have some, and then we just sum the log messages uh, from these other factors uh, from other nodes outside of the uh, in, uh, from other sorry from other factor nodes uh, that are connected to this uh, variable nodes. We sum all of their log messages. And then we just normalize the numerator by summing over all values that are possible for my variable of interest of the numerator. So the exponential, uh, exponentiated sum of log factors and log messages. So to sum up, approximate inference would correspond to summing over all the log factors that involve only the variable of interest yk. So this is this term here and this example I'm showing just one log factor but you have you could have more than one then you sum over all the log messages that come into yk from other factors so it's this sum here then you take the exponential uh, uh, the exponential of those sum of log factors and log messages and then you renormalize by to ensure that we get a valid distribution 
Okay, so this sums up the general belief propagation algorithm for general conditional random fields.